found the sword. Like a real sword. Am I allowed to say that on your blog? No, I have to say uh, make a beep because it's uh, it has to be advertiser friendly. It's like a World War Two. Yeah. Um, officers. Uh, Katana. Katana. So you got samurai sword. Yeah. So you got the thumb lock on that. You need yeah. to depress the trigger. Yeah. This so is what is that? It's the same thing? No. No, that's uh, a Norwegian. Rest. That's Norwegian cavalry. Yeah. Just like this. Stop it. This one. This one falls apart when you pull the trigger. Yeah. That's the the duplicate of that one for falling apart. Yeah. So that's it's made for falling apart. This one here. If you look here, then it's got a. And this one is supposed to break. It, this one is supposed to break, so you can pull this and it needs to be a bit oiled, and then it falls, snaps in half. Oh, that's nice. Give that, to, give that to the enemy. <laughs> yeah. Which show was that made for? I, I have no clue actually. This is before my time. It's like a Viking thing. Um, it's more Norman than Viking. And it's a, actually, it should end here unless it's somebody with very big hands. Mm. The, the, the grip on a Viking sword should actually be as big as your fist. Ah. Um, so. So the crossbows at the top, those are wholly illegal, but they've had the firing mechanisms cut out. They're uh, real? Yeah, they're real, but they're illegal. Uh, uh, as in, crossbows in Norway are illegal. But uh, those ones yeah. are the firing mechanism. That's my knowledge, yes. But these ones are either real or they're stage combat. So like these ones. Up. So this one, the edges have been taken off this and it's been rounded at the tip. Mm. So this is a modern sword made by Hanwei, which is a Chinese company. So it can be used for stage combat? This one we can use for stage combat. But not yeah. those? Um, not these ones, things like this. This is a dress sword and would just freaking snap. A lot of these are either wall hangers which you buy on holiday in like Spain or Pentagon cells, um, which are not particularly great. So things like um, this. This is actually sharp on the tip, but the, the balance on this is terrible. Yeah, I know. Uh, and it's literally just made for you know, it's made for somebody to, to hang on their wall and pose. So this would yeah. be, so some hero who never actually fights might have this one. Uh, well, this, this is like airsoft gun or something. Uh, there's are airsoft, yeah. So this, uh, this one snapped to the top, but these were done, so these were for the, um, the posing, and then this one was the turning piece, war into peace. So, you know, he goes pling and, Swords, go, flowers come out of everybody's swords. It's like a magician's sword. Exactly. Yeah, so most of these rifles we got from the National Museum. Um, so the real are, rifles. Yeah, the real rifles. So the all those, all those, and ones behind me, they're all real rifles which we got from the National Military. What about those? Those ones are really rubbishy ones we got for uh, from some toy shop for a production which we never used. Um, those ones are really rubbish ones we got from Game On for, oh, somebody snapped one already. Um, those we got for a production um, and you, literally everything is stuck together. They're the cheapest spring BB guns you can get. These ones, these are um, rings, so these are blue guns, but they're in black. Um, so these are training What's weapons. That blue? Oh, yeah, blue. Uh, blue guns is yeah. a company that makes training weapons. So we have like MP5s, um, we have um, AK-74s. Um, and yeah, these are those are used in a production of um, cheaper. That's an execution. Of the main chief bad guy was actually Osama bin Laden in the production. Can this be used, or is that just something? That's this is a prop one. I don't think it's an actual, but it's the weight and length and thickness of it would suggest that it's an execution sword because uh, it's not particularly useful for fighting on the battlefield unless you happen to be the mountain. Um, it is heavy as hoo. Uh, these are a real forged swords. Um, but they're, they're made for stage combat, so the edges are quite thick. But you could actually sharpen them down and use them as real swords. But these are, these are, are made by a blacksmith, um, properly forged as opposed to the cheap copies, which 
are just kind of um, stamped out. But these are properly forged, and you can um, put someone in armor and try and beat the heck out of them with one of these swords. Um, they're very strong. So this is a Viking, Viking single-handed sword, Man, and it's really big. light, uh, with a really nice scabbard. Um, the main, so this one, if you look at the size of the hand, the grip, um, the grip is supposed to encapsulate your hand, but these ones are made for people who do HEMA fighting. So mm. HEMA, Historical European Martial Arts. Yeah. So the idea is if you're fighting with this, you would actually have like a Dancers, huge- Dancers, welcome on stage. You would have a huge um, ice hockey glove. Yeah. And so the grip needs to be so big in order that if oh, somebody- yeah, So if someone hits your hand- it's Exactly, you're not going to break your hand. Break your so that's why the grip is so big, but the grip should actually stop there for Roy. So it's actually like three fingers too big because mm. once you grip it, it should lock it in and then, but because- it's Isn't that uncomfortable when you, when you nah. do like- No, nah, because with single-handed swords, it's, co it's coming from the wrist. With rapiers, we've got a box of rapiers here, then you actually have your finger more, this is the box of rapiers, you have your fingers more um, pointed, but this one, it's grip and it, you're rotating from the wrist. Mm. This is a stage combat katana. So this one has much thicker edges as well. Uh, no, the edge is quite thick. Yeah, the... the, the oh, right, the blade yeah. thickness. Yeah. Could you chop someone with that? Well, with the thickness of the blade, no. You could certainly do a lot, somebody a lot of damage. The tip needs to be ground down, because the tip is a bit sharp. Mm. Um, because, with this. because this comes as sharp oh, and it comes yeah. blunt and sharp. But, um, yeah, I just have to take the ed edge off the tip. But this we can do kind of just... Um, stage sword fighting with katanas. So these are training swords. Um, so if you put on a mask and just a bit of padding, you can merrily beat the heck out of each other with these ones if you actually want to. Thank you. And this is a training sword. So the weight is gives you the equivalent weight of having a full blade, but then you don't need the space in your living room in order to be able to practice. Yeah. That's the training version of this. Of? Of this sword. Well, yeah, so that's that the, is the same weight as the rest of the blade that's missing. So then that's the real sword. And this is, that yeah, is well, this, this is a, this is a German fencing sword, um, which they use for long sword training. But this is the training version, just so you don't smash the TV. Because if you're going like this and actually starting to manipulate this inside your room, you're going to take out the lights. But it's not supposed to be the width of the the base there. No, this is this is just yeah. This is this is entirely for fencing. So this you wouldn't use a sword like this in battle. Um, mm. But it's just it's a, a style of German training sword. This one's like one of those hero swords. This is not particularly good, um, but it's got a black blade because it looks cool. Um, I ordered this for someone else, and they managed to um, screw it up a bit, so I had to exchange it for something else. Cool. These ones are brilliant. The guy who makes these will be actually at the medieval fair next weekend. So this is a single-handed sword. So the two-handed swords, they really are quite heavy, whereas this one's very light, so you can have a shield and happily swing this around with the hand, unless you happen to be Roy, who can do it with one hand for any size sword. Um, so this is a pommel, and in English, the term to pummel comes from the pommel, because the idea is you get smack on somebody. And if you pummel somebody, you really beat them to heck. And if in you hit Spanish, puño. Yeah. So if you hit somebody with the end of this, it would really cause some damage. Um, so this is a nice little flared one. It's kind of like a flame design, but they come in all sorts. So you've got like the pinwheels or the little pepper pots or the little wedges. So crack, crack helmets and stuff like that. Uh, maybe this is um, a kind of Spanish cups, cup hilt style rapier. It actually has, uh, the blade is, is from an epee, um, but this is what you generally use in a theater, these blades for doing modern, um, reenactment fighting today but the the cup really gives you a lot of protection and we have heavy rapiers without so, the cup uh, so this has a swept hilt so this actually gives you almost as much protection as the cup hilt um, and it also it looks nicer um, but this is a heavy rapier as you can see by the width of the blade so you'd go from um, broadswords and then the blade would get thinner and thinner until you get down to this 
Um, and then this still had a cutting edge, but it was you could thrust with it and kill somebody with a point. Mm. Um, and things like the the um, lunge, thump, that wasn't really invented till very late because you couldn't do that with broadswords because generally you wouldn't use them one-handed like that. So broadswords was mainly cutting, and you if you had like the Roman sword, like a, a static sword, but it wasn't so much of a thrust. This is a small sword. The small sword was the last other way uh, was the last um, kind of military sword, except for the saber, before they died out. So this was this like would needle in the yeah, well exactly. So this um, there would be no edge on this. It would literally be a thrusting weapon. So you couldn't cut anybody. You would have to just like flick and scratch their face. But Poke. these, it was literally stab them until they died. And so often you could stab them several times before they realised that they had actually been killed. And, and a lot of duels, it wasn't you know who won. It's who succumbed to blood loss first, um, because there was generally no winner. So you just stab one and then run for uh, well, you hope you stab <laughs> until he bleeds out. Well, you hope because it depends where you stab him. I mean, you could like get him somewhere where it doesn't bleed too much, but often uh, you see a lot of these manuals and the sword has gone straight through somebody's head uh, in the pictures. Yeah, um, but yeah, the, these were probably the most dangerous sword because everything else you cut and you can see it coming, whereas this it's just pointed out there and it's just like thrust into them so just like in uh, in Game of Thrones yeah when she kills that boy exactly but the thing is I would be standing it you'd be have this like this at somebody so you can't really tell you don't have the depth perception of the blade anymore so if somebody is like this at you they can just thrust in or come around and get you at the side or just f f f f around your blade and mm. kill you happily um, it's a small sword. It's not particularly glamorous because it's it's quite a very it's a very fast weapon. So broadswords and broadswords everyone just goes ching ching ching, and it's slow when you can actually watch the fight. Rapiers it starts getting faster. You start seeing the musketeers and all that stuff, and you start losing where the blade is. Um, uh, small sword is like sport fencing, except for you die. Mm. Sport fencing uh, any type of like. Um, sport thing with swords is com completely inaccurate for having a fight on the grounds that unless you have a mortal fear of death no so with with sport fencing epe saber even hema when they're doing competitions it's first person to get the hit wins mm. the point it doesn't matter if the other person got them with a second hit mm. so if i hit roy in the head and he hit well hit roy hits me in the ch in the arm first and i get him in the head or he gets me in the chest, he got the first hit in, but the fact is, I mortally wounded him with the second hit, so there was no winner in that fight at all. Mm. So, in modern fencing, there isn't so much fear of death, because we have so much protection, and it is about who's the quickest, not who didn't get killed. Yeah, because you're not allowed to kill people anymore. You're not allowed to kill any people anymore. Apart from the Caribbean if, if you fight. you want to see some really cool choreography with sabers, uh, YouTube um, uh, Polish saber fights. It's like I'll put that link in the description. It's uh, really, really fast and uh, really impressive. Mm. Yeah. Really fun. Work. So this is a tool as well as, as well as a sword. You could use this for cutting. So cutting logs down if you're uh, an artillery officer, you might have or artillery, you might have a falchion. Um, but you could also fight your way out of the stress. And then you have, this is slightly fantasy cutlass, but it's the same thing. It's very short because on a ship, you can't reach up because you're out below decks or you have rigging above you, so you can't have a long sword. You need to cut stuff, you need to thrust, you need to be able to fight at close range. Yeah, and and, uh, exactly, and on ship, if you're fighting, if Roy's one of my friends, I've got to be able to be able to to cut and turn the blade in front of me so if it's going to be longer then you know i can't stand next to roy yeah gladius was big shield yeah around the, the shield the, you close, uh, fight close oh yeah yeah friends. that's what I mean. yeah yeah it's a sh it's the shield wall thing which was used for many many years and yeah. um it's still in use within law enforcement it's still yeah um yeah that's a tie yeah tie krabi krabong 
and very, very sharp, thin, leaf-shaped blade because you don't really have much armor. So, that was sharp as fuck. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, so, have you used those? Um, a little bit, but Melvin's uh, got the, still got the. Yeah, he still yeah. have yours. How's he with it, doing with those? He's having a lot of fun. Good. Yeah. So uh, I haven't worked with those, but um, I've been in a few seminars, but I uh, haven't uh, dug into it. Mm. So, but it's um, it's a traditional karate weapon, Okinawa, and, uh, and uh, have roots all the way back to China. Japanese police used the. Um, Something uh, was very similar to the side. It so only had one fork on it, so um, they could uh, capture uh, swords, um, and uh, it was called jite. So it's um, a lot of the same techniques. So you basically you just uh, flip it, and uh, same with the kama, like the rice cutter. This is actually a, actually a, a, a rice fork. So you stab the rice. Um, Bun uh, bunch, bunch, yeah. and you just throw them and you throw them around. This one you cut the rice with. Mm. But has all sorts of martial arts applications from hooking yeah. to cutting to from, from mm. all these unhappy games. Um, what have we done here? Top button, which is basically where you get the side but the side hundred baton from. That's what you use. That one you used a lot. Uh, not used a lot. Training. I practiced with them because yeah. uh, I convert a lot of the patterns with the tonfa. You start like this. You do if you do a punch, you punch here. Block, block. Elbow is nasty with yeah. those things. So should uh, be a little longer than your uh, forearm. So yeah, this is length for me. You can do this. Mm. Add elbows. You can swim it, and you can all kind of stuff with it. So you can hit there, there, and all the way over here. And, at the end. and use it as a blocking device as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can use it as a shield. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that one hasn't been taken out for a long time. That was heavy as well. Yeah. I have to take the edge off. No, no I have done the edge of that one a bit. Oh, this is okay. It's just the tip that's a little bit too pointy. Nice training sword. Yep. Little yeah, tight. Yeah, it's a bit tight. Always fun in the armory. I like the rustic. The new rust rustic weapons. <laughs> The homemade ones. Yeah. It looks very pirately. Yeah. Rusty. Well, you wouldn't want. Thank you for saving that.